Hey everybody, welcome back, welcome back. So in this tutorial, we're going to use Plotly and Dash to build this front-end user interface for ChatGPT developers. And why developers? Because this app is going to have uh, two different uh, components that you can interact with in order to fine-tune your ChatGPT model. So let's take a look. This we, here we have an input field where we just ask a question, basic question. But then we have the drop down and the temperature or the slider that can help us uh, fine tune this, um, this answer, right? So this looks like a pretty good answer, but what if we want something more deterministic? So we can change it to 0 0.1, the temperature, and now you'll see something more deterministic, more factual. If we want something a lot more, um, uh, less deterministic, more more random, uh, then you can you can raise the temperature, but then you get things that don't necessarily make a lot of sense for this type of question. Maybe if you ask, you say, let explain what is art, then a more random uh, temperature, a higher temperature that will create a more random response might be better, but less so for technical questions. And then we have the model and you can change the model from 0 0.03 to maybe text ADA. Um, oh, this is a pretty interesting answer. Text ADA. And then you can see how, how the answer might, uh, might change based on the different models. So you can compare different models here. So this is what's so cool about this uh, Python dash app that you, you are creating your own user interface to fine tune your model before you, uh, before you release this to, to your, public to your users um, uh, that are going to use uh, your ChatGPT model. So uh, the best way to follow along, um, my recommendation is go to my GitHub. I'll put this under the video. Go to dash with ChatGPT folder, dash ChatGPT.py, copy the, the whole file and just paste it into your VS Code or PyCharm. And this is what you're going to see, right? now. To be able to run this file, make sure to install these libraries, pip install dash, pip install um, uh, bootstrap. You can do that with a terminal like this, pip install dash bootstrap, and obviously pip install open API. Now you're going to need an API key. This is my key that I will uh, erase after the video, uh, but you can easily go to this link. I'm gonna share under the video, just go here, and create your own new secret key. Obviously, you need to open an account on uh, the Open Open API. Open AI. So once you have your API key, here we're creating just a list of different models. All these models, all these models are models that we are going to include in the dropdown. So here we have a full list of all the models that we're going to test out. Okay. The main part of this uh, tutorial of this app is the callback. Everything happens inside inside the callback here from line 47 to line 50, 72. But before we go into the callback, let's go over the layout a little bit. Here we have the layout from line 14 to 46. So the layout is just anything that you want to display on the page, you will uh, mention it or you will write it down inside the layout. So in this case, we have our title H1. Then we have just we have DBC row and, and DBC columns. These columns and rows are just helpful to put things in the right section, right? So the, the drop down is going to go to the left. The temperature is going to go to the right, the slider. And then this goes in the middle. Um, so the most important things I want to draw your attention to in the layout is the drop down on line 20, right? We have here um, the drop down options are the model options we created above. So these are all the options. Then we have the initial value 003. See how it's 001. If we restart the app, the initial value will be 003. And then we'll just call this models. We're going to use this later in the callback. So remember this. Then we have the slider from zero minimum to two maximum from zero to two because the temperature, if you, you want to read, I'm going to give you this link. The 
the uh, temperature goes between 0 to 2. These are the values. So it can't be lower than 0, it can't be higher than 2. This link of creating a completion um, um, a method, uh, I'm going to give you this uh, link under the video so you can click on it and read all about the different parameters that can be updated and, and fine-tuned uh, when you're using ChatGPT. In our case, we're only going to fine-tune the temperature and the model type. All right, so we have the we have the slider. Our initial value is 0 0.7. Let's make this. See how we jump to 0 0.7. And then uh, underneath, we have input and the button. So here we have an empty input field. And here we have the submit button. All right, so that's the layout. Let's close the layout here. And let's go to the callback. Let's open up the callback. Now, so this is the meat of it. This is what, what allows you to, to interact with the app. So here we're going to have four different arguments. One input and three states. Um, the input component property will be n clicks. This n clicks that belong to the button. See, this is the button ID. Button ID. So this n clicks will start with zero, right? And clicks, this is going to start with zero. Um, and this is what's going to trigger, this is an input. So this is what's going to trigger the function and execute the function. Only this and clicks. If and clicks is bigger than one. So when I click on the button, this is going to be one. And then this will trigger the function because n clicks is bigger than zero. Or if I click it again, it's two and three and four. Every time I click it, it triggers a function and, and, and executes this um, ChatGPT open API uh, uh, function. Then we have three states. The value of the input field, right? It's empty, but if I put something, my question, then this will be my question, right? And so on and so on. So the value of the input field, the value of models, remember models is the drop down model. So the initial value is this. So this will be the initial value that it's going to take like that. And then the value of the temperature, anywhere from zero to two. Okay. So these are states. Remember as state arguments, state arguments, these do not trigger the function. The function will read read these arguments and this data, but it's not going to do anything to the function. The function, the callback is only going to trigger and execute when the button is clicked. So we can change things, we can do this, but nothing is going to happen until we click on the button. All right. So we click on the button and what happens then, let's say, uh, what is Plotly? Let's put this as 0 0.01, babage, and let's put this at one. So what's going to happen, this is going to be, text input will be what is Plotly. The model input will be text babage 001, text babage 001. Let's make this uh, like that. It's a string as well. And the temperature will be one, right? So this is because this is dynamic, now the model input will be this, text babage. The text input will be this, what is plotly. And the temperature input will be one, right? So this is, but this is static. We don't want to uh, write down everything inside the callback function. It defeats the purpose. So to make these dynamic arguments, we'll just change it back to what they were before. Just names of arguments like that. And now we'll see that the model input will be whatever we choose. If it's 003, now this will be 003. The question will be whatever we write, go in here, and the temperature will be whatever we choose in the slider. So that is that is how we create this dynamic um, dynamic inputs into our open API completion method. So we get a response based on these parameters. And once we get the response, we'll extract the generated text from the response and return this text to the children of output text. So where is that? The children of output text is right here. 
output text is ID, and the children is right here. Equal whatever the response was, right? Like this. Like that. But you don't have to write this down because it's dynamic. It will do that automatically. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you. I hope this helps you. Um, again, I'll add these links under the video so you can learn more about the different uh, methods and functions and all the different parameters. If you have any questions, like always, ask them below the video, and I'll try my best to respond to them. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video if you liked it, and uh, and turn on your notifications so you get notified of future videos that I make. Always remember, we're better together, so help each other out. Have a good one.